This is consistent with what we said from the beginning, which is that we wanted to set a very high standard indeed for caring for our most vulnerable populations throughout the course of the pandemic. It's one of four parks where the city has posted notices warning people the camps will be cleared next Tuesday. It's part of a project called Pathway Inside and comes with the offer of temporary housing. Uh, we've, had, uh, we've had tremendous success uh, with this program and, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, it's about being compassionate. A room at 45 The Esplanade, a city-run hotel in the city core. So that, that's another uh, step in, 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 in this compassionate approach to listening and helping people ultimately achieve housing. I will just say that uh, what we have done in this case is to put together a very carefully and thoughtfully put together plan uh, to move uh, people who are in encampments in public parks to uh, better housing, to permanent housing. These encampments are not safe, they are not healthy, and they do not belong in public parks. So number one goal, really providing a safe space. An effort to ensure clients feel safe and welcomed within the program. To make sure everything is safe. And to build the wraparound supports needed to keep them safe. The City of Toronto does not care about our safety. So, I'm Jay the Letter. Second name is Woe Boy. Birth name is Yo. But I'm a little, but I'm a little embarrassed about it though. So don't mention my birth name. <laughs> Stop it. My name is Derek Black. I'm, I am the proclaimed manager and CEO and Mayor of Moss Park. Hi, my name is Jennifer Jewell, and I am a 50-year-old disabled homeless woman. No one should be homeless. No one. So I guess around this time last year, the, the pandemic that was spreading in overseas came here and North America went into lockdown. Many people weren't able to work. And I think it became very apparent like how fragile people's living situations are. The COVID pandemic has brought it to light. But the government's been sweeping it under the rug for too long. I've been out here for four years moving from shelter to shelter to shelter, one after the other, housing applications, violence, stealing, drugs, staff that don't care. So I finally said, you know what, I'm done with the shelter system. I'm going outside. I was evicted from my apartment of more than 20 years. Um, it happened before COVID. <coughs> and I spent four months living outside in Jeffrey Grove Park. Most of the traditional shelters are not wheelchair accessible, they do not have accessible facilities, and they don't have staff trained in meeting physical needs. I'm immunocompromised and have been for a very long time. I have a lot of allergies, so even without COVID, I cannot go into a traditional shelter. Even my doctor agreed that it was much safer for me to be living outside in the park. Many people came out to the parks and it was just something I was barely aware of. I would just go around and see, oh wow, there's a lot of tents out here. I have never seen so many tents in these parks, it's, it's, yeah, it was just surreal to me. And then as the months went on, as it got into summer and as it got into September, into the fall, there were still many people stuck outside that didn't have a place to go. I was lucky enough in my third month in the park that Khalil came through and he camped me and asked if it was okay if we talk and asked if I wanted a tiny shelter. I started building them and it, it began to get a lot of media attention and many people started to come out and help with the cause. Many people wanting to offer their skills to come and help build. The shelter that Kiel gave me, it, it, it was the most amazing thing. It was the first time that I actually had a home. This gentleman here was my best friend. We were homeless together almost four years. His name was Jeremy Debris. Like the little brother I never had. Very annoying, but he was a good guy. I loved him very much. He died in uh, one of the hotels in this city. I told him not to go. He went. I never seen him again. It's not their fault. And they want to put us in hotels to segregate us? You know how many people have died in these hotel programs, guys? I asked the mayor, does he have a key? Does he go inside and come whenever you want? That's all the people want. Yeah. 
to go and come where they choose without nobody have to time them and tell them you got to sign in that time and that time and you're a big people? Yeah. We don't need that. We need to go on our own. They make it seem like, oh, we're not doing evictions. We've changed the phrasing. They're called clearings. Oh, no, we're not clearing anyone out. We changed the phrasing. Oh, yeah. We're just cleaning. We're just cleaning. Oh, we're not. We're just getting people inside, you know, and if they don't want to go inside, we're just pushing them out of sight because it's, you know, it's a little unsightly. These notices that are going up around parks on the shelters, these Oh, Pathways Inside Project. Oh, wow, look at how much we're doing now that it's warm out. Look, look at how much we're doing now that, you know, weather's great, let's just kick them out. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an eviction notice. It's really an eviction notice. And they made a statement saying, oh, yeah, like in this document, April 6, 8 a.m., you know, if you don't take a space inside, we're going to come and force you out of here. I don't think that is a reasonable approach at all. And on April 6th, I want all of you supporters to come and support all those encampment people that don't have a place to go yeah, yeah. and stood fast and be aligned for everybody and make everything all right. Yeah. Thank you. Trying to get us kicked out. But I don't know who. The police are coming. The corporate security is coming. I don't like this. I like it that they keep moving us. I don't like to move. Where have you been moved to? I'm trying to get us to a hotel, but I don't like the hotel. Too much rules there. Too many rules, too many things to follow. I'm not going to no hotel. I said, no, 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 no. They're bullying us, trying to move. But security is right there, see? Coming again. What do we do about it? They're people, not criminals and animals. Just so you know, I'm allowing you to do that now, but eventually you're gonna get arrested. Right? Baboon! For what? Go get the baboon out. Mischief, Mischief. trespassing. Once I, once I explain to you what's happening, you're, you're first to get arrested. So I've already warned you, you're first to get arrested. How do you foresee this playing out? Because this is the way I, I see it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're offering the housing, mm -hmm. right? We're just here to keep the peace and make sure there's no miscommunication. We have the authority to arrest. We have... You do, they don't. Right, so I want you to think about that because I don't want to arrest anymore. Ma'am, it doesn't matter, it's not your business. Right now you're coming up to the up. Shay! 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 Arresting the force! Who can stop that? We keep us safe! Who keep us safe? We keep us safe! City staff, along with security guards and police officers, had come in here around 9 this morning, perhaps a little earlier, to act on a trespassing notice that had been served here one week ago. Get him in there. Pack him up. Back them up. Back up the trash. I'm saying. Hey, you're hurting him. Come meet me down. You're hurting him. Stop. Stop the camp. Stop the camp. Hey, stop. The mayor says there were 15 people there when city officials came to evict them after no trespassing notices were handed out when many more came to defend the camp.
No, I don't. I just was told to close the gates. Like, so. you have no idea what's going to happen. No, I have no clue. But you just do it You can call 311 to find out. You know Are what? I can call you okay. Hello? Do you know Toronto? Anybody home? I cannot go into a shelter space for health and safety reasons. Uh, but we have hotel spaces as well. I cannot go into a hotel space for health and safety reasons. Okay. I am safer here in the park. This is where one goes when they're homeless, especially during a pandemic. Uh, the city's focus, as I say this morning uh, and today, is to, to help those uh, who are living in this encampment come inside where it's safe. <laughs> Here is another live look at police officers lining the edge of the park. After a couple of tense hours, a tentative resolution, police agreed to back off. Protesters, for the most part, agreed to leave. Back up. You're going to get arrested. Back up. Back up. Thank you. Can you please back up, please? Can we help her move her stuff? Pack her, like, uh, what's going on here? She was just told that they can stay. They can stay? Yeah. Can we tell them over there? So we're, we're helping her move. Staff? Are you part of this group I'm here? helping yes. her move. Stay in here. Thank you. Well, and her stuff. Do not come out because I can't help you at that point. Okay, but her stuff is over there. We're not moving it. Okay. We're not touching anything. I'm just in complete disbelief. I'm shocked. Um, yeah, I've never seen police being so aggressive. The police officers uh, are there, and that's their decision as to where they will be and where they won't. I don't direct where police officers go or what they do. There does come a time when the enforcement people have to make their own decision as to when they have to take some action to uh, say that we can't let the situation continue, and they have done so this morning. And I think they're doing it in as measured and balanced a way as they can, and I support uh, that action.
the evictions that occurred are a violation of human rights and harm the health of those who are living in the encampment community. Um, uh, the UN uh, Special Rapporteur on Housing uh, in 2020 came out with a report that talked about what uh, uh, the rights of people who live in encampments are and actually prohibited these kinds of evictions that we saw to send hundreds of police, security, horses and drones um, to intimidate and evict people is just not fair. It's, it's also harming health. The other thing that we need, we need to start talking about is cost effectiveness. Um, imagine, um, you know, if all the resources that were spent yesterday at Trinity Bellwoods were actually directed towards housing, towards social supports, harm reduction, mental health, food security for people, and not over-policing the poor, um, uh, how much further would we be as a society? What you know, heights would we be able to achieve together? I think these are the kinds of questions that I hope all people um, in the city and in this country are really asking. We're at a, a, a juncture, at a cross point, and I really hope that we take the road of healing and not hurting through policing. Some on the scene were arrested. Nine people in total, seven for trespassing, including a photojournalist, when media were told they couldn't get inside the fences to document what was going on. As it happens, all over again. It's about 4.30 in the morning. I heard a lot of noises and screaming. Came to my camp, came to my tent. Made me aware that the city was up to something. I'm screaming for people to get, wake up, get out of your, get out of your tents. Nobody backed me. A lot of guys talk smack and all this shit, but I was alone. What time was it? It was about five o'clock when the cops showed up. And they came in force right after me. I was their main target. First and foremost, the homeless needs, the needs of the people experiencing homelessness are met, but also with a definite timetable by which we have to have this park available for use by the local residents. Just two days after the city evicted people living in an encampment at Alexandra Park, signs have popped up in the area notifying the public of a film shoot. I'm Leilani Farha, the Global Director of The Shift and the former UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Housing. This is obviously not a human rights approach to homeless encampments. People living in encampments are not trespassers. They are rights holders and they are entitled to be treated with dignity and respect. I urge the City of Toronto to find a different way. Toronto encampment residents and their supporters have outlined a plan called A Path Forward, and they've now launched an online petition to have the plan added to tomorrow's city council meeting. It urges the city to improve safety at shelters while engaging with those living in tents right now instead of clearing the encampments like we saw at Trinity Bellwoods Park last month. I think what we saw at Trinity Bellwoods um, obviously was highly problematic for lots of different reasons, but ultimately, given the resources that were actually deployed in Bellwoods, we didn't actually have the result of people really accessing housing, but the approach that they're using now ultimately doesn't work. Uh, what we're suggesting instead is a human rights approach, uh, which is really looking at uh, the barriers that people face in accessing appropriate, healthy housing uh, and accessing shelter safe that they feel safe to go inside. Beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. I'm a volunteer with the Encampment Support Network, and our Parkdale crew has been coming to Lamport Stadium every day for nearly 400 days. Over those 400 days, we have seen encampment clearings become more and more militarized. The city PR machine will tell you that they always offer options to move people indoors, but on this morning, dozens of police, Private security, comprised primarily of young racialized workers, 
and horse cops have shown up. City housing workers have not, though members of the city's encampment team have now shown up. Today, we're here to support our neighbors in tents. And right now, as these fences go up around us, I implore you to listen to members of our community. Why are the police here? Why are we harassed by the police? Why, are they, why is the police, why is the government trying to deprive us of the temporary housing that we create for ourselves so that we can survive? Because the shelter system failed us, didn't work. Yes. And now, you're trying to deprive us of the very temporary housing that we created for ourselves instead of providing us permanent housing. And what you're trying to do is actually inhumane, heartless. It's beyond description. We've been having some really productive and generative meetings with the ESN and, and resident encampment members. Uh, to actually have dialogue and to try to work to find actual workable solutions at their own pace so that they have agency and that people have the sense that they are able to determine their own destiny. And really that is the dignified way forward and the way that everybody should be engaging with each other. I don't think that we're asking for a lot or that the ESN is asking for a lot or that residents of the encampment are asking for a lot. Yes, this kind of engagement takes longer it's more complicated, it's not going to happen in a single day, but ultimately the results are going to be longer lasting, less detrimental for the community, and better overall for everyone. So again, we want to echo the sentiments of everyone else here today and encourage city officials to find another way forward uh, rather than these forced uh, encampment evictions. We're not addressing, we're not here, here. Okay, Mel, I'm out of here. We're out of here now, it's done. The conversation's done and we're going. The next piece will come in. You want to talk to me? Come to me inside my home. No problem, I was just asking to you. Let's go, let's go. 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 We're we cooking up here today. We got burgers, we got uh, chicken wieners, and we got uh, veggie dogs. Nice. A little bit of everything for everybody. Perfect. Gotta make sure the people are fed. We got water over here, Gatorade. It's gonna be a good day. Not for the best reasons, but it's gonna be a good day. As a property, or we're just asking you to uh, leave. If not, you might get arrested. All right, are you good with that? You guys know you're in violation of the Trespassing Property Act. We're gonna ask you guys to leave. Uh, if you guys don't leave, you guys risk the possibility of being arrested. Okay? Thank at, you very much. At what point did we become in violation of that act? What's that? At what point did we become in violation of the Trespass to Property Act since we've been here for hours? Nothing? So I just suggest you leave. I've been told a bunch of times it's not a secret. If you have any what questions, happens why? when all the tents come back at you? What's that? You just do this again. You just want to do this cycle over and over again? back lane there uh, for about a week or so and that's where I met Skyler here and I really learned a lot about the tactics of defending land and, um, for the purpose of it being shared by all in the spirit in the spirit of the treaties uh, particularly the dish with one spoon treaty I'm still learning as a settler myself but I think that uh, what, what is happening to, here today is, is, uh, is in the same vein that uh, space should be spared, shared by all we are down to support whatever we can to push back at every opportunity and I mean it 
if there's any example like 1492 Land Back Lane is an example that when we stand together, we have an opportunity to be able to push back. We can fight. We can win. And so if the folks that are, you know, on the fence as to whether or not to come down or whatever, it's time to get here. You no, know, it's time to get here now. Like, we need people outside the fence. We need that support for people to come down and bring supplies, whatever it's going to take to make sure that these folks are able to stay here for the foreseeable. This, this is crazy. This is like beyond it's military. Crazy. It's military. Community? Yeah. Um, Having a barbecue. How does this make sense? And I was barbecuing. I was offering them all food. Please, <laughs> officer, have some food. Have some water. No, no, can't do that. Why? I flush. Have you got pepper spray? Yeah. Officers lining up face to face with those standing their ground. At this point, police have started to move in and remove people forcefully. Arrests have been made. You can see here that they're starting to break through some of the barricades that have been set up. They want it to be as peaceful as possible and not see anybody get hurt. of the City of Toronto brutal assault on the Lampert Stadium encampment, we, the undersigned organizations, advocates, and encampment residents demand an end to these violent encampment evictions, that all charges laid against community members be dropped, and that Mayor John Tory resign immediately. During the early hours of Wednesday, July 21st, hundreds of police officers descended on Lamport Stadium Park. City workers proceeded to fence in encampment residents and their supporters. As a drone hovered overhead, security guards warned people to leave or face arrest for trespassing. Then, brandishing steel batons, police moved in. They hit someone in the face, breaking their nose and splitting open their forehead and lips. They slammed someone else's head into the pavement, leaving them with a concussion. They choked and tossed another person by their neck. 
Two people are now in casts and will require further x-rays to determine if bones were broken. Police punched, kicked, clubbed, and pepper sprayed dozens of other people and arrested 34. Encampment residents and their supporters were peacefully standing the ground that day, painting signs and having a barbecue. Residents refused to leave because they had nowhere else to go. At least 24 people lived at the Lamport encampment before the eviction. Almost all are still living outside, scattered to other parks in the city. One of the residents goes by Jake. He was evicted last month from a different homeless camp. Most likely, I'll be probably putting up a tent somewhere because I, I, can't, I, I can't live indoors anymore. The outcome is completely ineffectual at addressing homelessness. People are just bouncing around to different outdoor locations and police are following them with a hammer. It's literally a game of whack-a-mole. What we all need to be doing is listening to encampment residents. They are the experts of their own lives and they are fully capable to make decisions regarding their own safety and well-being. I am not doing okay. If it weren't for the love and support of the community and the people that are surrounding me, there would be nothing for me. No government support is provided when you are a victim of state violence. This has to stop. I am not okay, and I've had to take time off work to deal with this, but it was important to me to come here in terms of solidarity and for a brief moment to say this. I have a message for you, Mayor John Tory. I hear you're having difficulties viewing the photos and videos from the day. I would be happy to send you the photo of Sergeant Michael McGee violently striking me with a baton after forcefully shoving me down by the head. And after looking at that photo, I want you to realize that you are the reason this happened. You signed off on this operation. You have underfunded housing and overinflated the police budget. You are the reason our community is living in poverty while you watch from your ivory tower in Yorkville. You are morally bankrupt and are in turn bankrupting our people of the social services they need to live. You are a stain on the city and you must resign. You know, we are at war here. We're not at a fucking candy store looking for candies. So you know what, if you can't do this work, then get the fuck out now. Because we are here to fight back. There's no time to be, um, you know, humble and um, respectful and all this stuff because that's, them people, the other side, you know, they showed us other than just blatantly fucking disrespect. Everywhere that we have gone to try to get out of sight and out of mind where these people want us, we are hunted down and we are cleared out the way that we were at Lamport, the way that we were at Alexandra Park, the way that we were at Trinity Bellwoods, the way that we are under the Gardner, under the Gardner Expressway, or out in the Dawn Valley, or in Rosedale Valley, or anywhere that we have the audacity to try to exist. This homeless encampment at Moss Park is a different place than maybe it was a week ago. Same amount of people and tents, only they know a clearing is coming. They've seen what happened at Lamport Stadium this week, and instead of hope, there's now fear. And they're telling us that, yo, we're coming to get you out of here. Where are you taking us? Where are you putting us? We don't have no place. You don't have no place for us. Let's get back to reality. I've been moved around so much. I'm tired of it. I'm willing to fight to the end. Nobody's removing me from here. Nobody. I don't care what they think they can do to me. You arrest me, do what you need to. I will end up right back here when I get out. If they're gonna knock down all the encampment in the city, I'm gonna make sure Moss Park is not one they gonna knock down. Yeah. We need to keep fighting and whatever that means, keep standing up, even your presence. The bodies, the numbers is going to make a difference. Who's going to do? Who's going to make the difference? Who here is going to make a difference in their lives? The people united. The people united. The people united.
people united! The people united! The people united! These are our demands. John Tory's immediate resignation for the violence he has inflicted on working class people in the city to end encampment evictions, repeal the bylaws criminalizing people who reside in parks until they leave on their own terms to permanent housing they deem safe and accessible. To drop the provincial and criminal charges against everyone arrested at encampment evictions, including at Lamport Stadium and in the aftermath outside 14th Division on July 21st, 2021. And lastly, to adopt the recommendations made by the Toronto Drop-In Network in a path forward. Thank you for your time. <laughs>